Young and old, every day we eat and drink. Whether you're an infant sucking on a bottle, the bisphenol A issue, or an older person graving for some nice fish and chips, potentially dipped in ink, we all want the assurance that it's safe. And when you're enjoying your fish and chips and then reading the newspaper about another scandal, it's definitely spoiling your appetite and also not assuring. So it's time to learn more about how food contact is regulated. Together with Wilfred Fun from Keller and Heckman, who has an extensive background in regulatory and government affairs and has worked in several capacities in industry. Wilford is currently assisting clients on regulatory issues, focusing on food and drug regulation and chemical control laws in Asia. Fish and chips recipes have some varieties all over the world, but it's always the same basics, battered fish and potato chips. Global food regulations there ever are far from harmonized. Could you explain the different approaches countries and regions take? You are absolutely right. The uh, global food contact regulations are far from uh, harmonized. Unlike the direct food additive where there has been an international effort, primarily under the United Nations FAO and WHO, but for food contact regulations, the efforts of international harmonization is very limited. Your company, Keller & Heckman, originates from the United States. Uh, in the United States, the Food and Drug Administration, FDA, their regulation is, among others, based on risk assessment, taking into account the intended conditions of use. Does this regulation explain how industry should verify with their downstream users about the intended use conditions? The FDA has their own unique system, pre-market approval system, carried by its complication of multiple ways of clearance and also the food contact notification system. Actually, it's not the uh, obligation of the in industry to verify the compliance of their customers. It is the obligation of the business firm to verify or to make sure the compliance of their own products and, and service. So it's not that the intended use conditions are somehow fixed, that you have to state you can only use it for. It is more that downstream has to check from upstream if it's correct. Exactly, but they also have the irrigation to communicate the information, the necessary information to their downstream customers. The FDA, they also have a GRAS database eh, for chemical substances generally recognized as safe. Does the FDA guarantee the safety of new and existing chemicals added uh, to food in that database? No, FDA does not really guarantee the safety of any grass the substance per se. In fact, FDA has been very careful in the language in their response letters to any grass notification or food contact notification. FDA will typically say something like, the, we confirm your conclusion. FDA will also typically say something that it is continuous obligation of the business to make sure that the, uh, their product uh, is still safe based on the latest scientific evidence. And FDA has the authority to either change or withdraw their opinion based on the latest scientific evidence. China has a positive list of food contact additives, the GBA 9685. Yes. Uh, is that similar to GRAS? No, actually, it's quite different uh, in a number of ways. GRAS actually covers both the base polymers and additives, but GB 9685 covers only food packaging additives. GB 9685 listing is generic, meaning anybody, any company can use that substance. And also adds to that complication that grass in the U U.S. can be self-determined. But GB9685 listing is mandatory. Uh, for public consultation, uh, are there any significant changes expected? Well, there are some changes, but I would not call them uh, significant. This time, the amendment of GB9685 is primarily on its uh, formality uh, in a number of ways. First, it will incorporate uh, the so-called cleanup approvals and also the approvals out as a result from the uh, new administrative approval process into GB9685. There are also some minor changes, including the removal of a number of uh, thetic substances to change the, uh, the title from uh, the awkward old name of food packaging ma materials and uh, production equipment to food contact substances.
They're also in China consolidating now the various food contact standards and developing a kind of new regulatory framework for food contact. What can we expect from that? Well, that's actually a very important piece of uh, Chinese direct dietary development. China is in the process of uh, creating or significantly amending a number of uh, important standards on food contact and reg regulation. Among other things, China is going to establish in a so-called standard on the general safety requirement to food contact materials. That will serve as sort of the framework re regulation in the European Union. And in that framework regulation, there will be a very important point that is the inclusion of a functional barrier concept. That is a very important development in Chinese regulation. Final question, what do you think is the biggest challenge for industry uh, to ensure food safety and compliance? For that, I would think about the two things. First of all, it's about the professional capacity of any business to evaluate the status of compliance of their own products and service. And also to check the uh, credibility of the uh, declaration of a compliance document from their suppliers. Substance or product is approved. It may go along with certain restrictions or limitations or uh, prescribed conditions of the use. It is the obligation of the business to pass along this message uh, along the value chain to their users and the customers. Okay, thank you for your expert opinion. Uh, I hope we'll still be able to keep enjoying our fish and chips and other foods and that there will be less food scandals in our newspapers. Thank My you very pleasure. much. Thank you.